Hi, welcome to the Prairie Oaks Pulpit Bible Study. And we're finishing our journey through the book of Joshua. So, Joshua chapter 24. And it's a one of those coffee cup verses, or maybe it's a wall decal verse. But you may even have it at your house. Very familiar phrase within verse 15 of Joshua 24. And so let's look at it in its context and see what lessons there are in this verse. So I'm going to read two verses here, but we're really going to use the whole two chapters. Joshua 24, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And so, you recognize it, don't you? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so, as a good leader, Joshua has led them up to this point. They have uh, conquered as many of the Canaanites as God was going to give them up to this point. Uh, and he tells them, yep, there's still some out in the land. That's for the next generations and the future generations to continue to grow more numerous and to be able to push out the rest of the Canaanites that God did not want in his land anymore. He didn't want their actions done anymore, to be more precise. They had become so bound up with their sin that the only way to purge the sin was to purge them. And so God, as the holy landlord, evicts them from his land so that he brings in the Israelites and tells them, don't do what the previous tenants did, because that's why they got kicked out. And so we uh, skipped over a long geography lesson there as Joshua divided the land to the different tribes. But now he's gotten old and he's has the elders, he has the leaders, he has uh, the people come, and he's given them this charge. And it's recorded in Joshua 23 and 24. And it's summed up by this verse, right? You need to choose. And some things to consider in the choosing, Joshua says. He says, you know what the Lord has done for you. You know. And he records some of that, you know, looking back in, in chapter 24. He goes all the way back to Abraham. This is the land that our father Abraham was promised. And Isaac and Jacob. And you remember that Jacob's brother was given land somewhere else. So I've saved this land for you, God says. And I brought you out of Egypt. I defeated the Egyptians and, and wiped them out at the Red Sea. I brought you through the wilderness. I defeated your enemies along the way and now I have brought you to this point. I've sent the hornet before you that those enemies would be driven out of the land. You wouldn't even have to fight them. They'd run away just as a person runs away from hornets, which is what I would do. And so he says, looking back, here's some points to consider. The Lord has already been very good to you. So that's why he says, maybe you should choose the Lord. He also says, you need to look ahead. What kind of life do you want to have before you? And there in 20. Three, he reminds them, just as the Lord has brought all these good things 
upon you just as he had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just as he'd promised when you were in Egypt and slaves, just as he had promised at Mount Sinai when he'd brought you to himself. The Lord has fulfilled all of his promises. So be warned that he will still fulfill his promises if you choose to follow him, there's blessing to continue. But if you choose to rebel against him, he'll keep his promises there as well. And there will be discipline. There will be hard times. In fact, he'll kick you out of the land, he says to the Israelites. You will perish quickly from the good land which he has given you. That's the last line of, of chapter 23. In Joshua and so he's warning them there's good ahead do you want that or there's evil ahead will you choose that the Lord is saying look back I've been good to you it's a good reason to choose I have more good ahead that's a good reason to choose so those are some points to consider. But also important to consider is in the choosing itself. What does it mean to choose to serve the Lord? Well, there's these phrases embedded within Joshua's words here. In Joshua 23, verse 6, Therefore be very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn from it from the right hand or to the left. And if you've been with me all along through the book of Joshua, that will sound very similar because that's what the Lord told Joshua, not once, but I think three times, a couple times through Moses, and then one more time after Moses had passed away, there on the, before they would cross the Jordan, the Lord tells Joshua personally, be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Meditate in the law of God that you may observe to do all that is written in it. I will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And so... Joshua takes what he has learned and what he has experienced of God's goodness. He fulfilled his promise. And he says, I want you guys to experience that as well. Be courageous to keep and do all that is written. In fact, he gives that over and over again. But in this, not turning to the left or the right, reminds me of Jesus saying that broad is the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. But we need to stay on the straight and narrow. Not to the left, not to the right. But it's going to take courage. It's not easy. That is not the path of least resistance. He says in verse 8, You shall hold fast to the Lord your God, as you've done to this day. He says you've done good so far, but it's easy to cling for a short time. And that stand fast is to cling, is to, to hold tight. Don't give up. Take careful heed to walk with the Lord. Otherwise, you're going to cling to other things. It's like they're Velcro. They're just looking for something to stick to. And he says, stick to God. Stick to God. And in this staying faithful to obey and to do. Now, when... The tribes that lived on the other side of the Jordan River were getting ready to go back home. Joshua told them very similarly in Joshua 22, verse 5. 
take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the law, commanded you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways, to keep his commandments, hold fast to him, to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And so Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. But take careful heed. Love him. Walk, walk in all of his ways. Keep his commandments. Hold fast. Cling to him. Serve him. And so he says it here as well. In fact, in verse 11, he repeats that one valuable phrase there. To love the Lord your God. Because again, that's what Joshua was taught. He was taught it by Moses. Deuteronomy 6. We're going to flip over there real quick. There's so much in Deuteronomy. My eyes keep finding different verses here and there. But the one we're looking for is verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And he says, I want you to pass this on. Love the Lord your God. Love him singularly. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is what Jesus said was the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? But he says, I want you to love. To honor and love him completely. And not to get led astray. And it's easy to get led astray. I'm flipping over to 2 Corinthians for something. I don't know why this came to mind this week, but I'm going to share it with you again. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He warns them that in order to stay faithful to God, to stay true to Him, we've got to be wary of being led astray by other gods, by the devil, who makes up these imaginary other gods that we will fall victim to, idols of our own little hearts. And he says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And he goes on and says, what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion is light with darkness? What accord is Christ with the devil? Belial, it says. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's what it means to love the Lord our God. It is this kind of devotion to him. And so he says to love the Lord your God, be faithful to him, cling to him, it's going to take courage. It's going to take resolution. And to a certain extent, it's going to help if you know the consequences of it. Because now going back to chapter 24, who was it that Joshua said just before he told them to, to choose? He said, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. There's a little bit of just good old-fashioned, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He's bigger than us. Remember how the, the Gibeonites, 
They surrendered. We surrender. At all costs, we will surrender. They knew they couldn't beat God. So unlike all the other Canaanites who were going to go down fighting, they were like, nope, we're going to win. We're going to surrender. That's how we win. That's how we surrender. They learned the fear of the Lord and surrendered to him. And so this faithfulness, persistence, and without compromise, without competitors, as James said, a double-minded man, a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. But to be single-minded for God, it's going to take effort. It's going to be a challenge. Serve him in sincerity and in truth or faithfulness. Put away those gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. We all were pagans before we got saved. And there's still that streak in us even once we're saved. And so he says, you can go to the gods of the past. You can go to the, the gods that promise you a future, but know that they won't deliver. That's why he went to all the points to consider. The past, who actually delivered? The true God, the God most high, the Lord, who gave his own son for us, demonstrated his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that promise of the future, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And there's a place prepared for the devil. You don't want to go there. You want to go to the place that's prepared for his people. Choose you this day. Where do you want to go? What does it mean to choose? It is to, to surrender in repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus warns us that there are challenges in this. Joshua's doing the same thing here. The people are like, oh, we'll serve the Lord. He's our God. You cannot serve the Lord. Not the way you are now. We need to cry out to God to help us to surrender more, to repent more, because he is a holy God, and we're not. And he's making us holy. He's declared us to be holy. He is a jealous God. Does not allow competitors. Because he deserves 100%. And it says there, he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. But it's hearkening back to what was revealed at Exodus 34 at Mount Sinai when Moses said, I want to see you, God. And we hear what God says to him there on the mountain. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, but by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and children's children to the four, third and fourth generation. If they continue to rebel against him, it's generational. So he will forgive iniquity and sin if they ask for it. But if they do not, he won't wink from it. He doesn't play favorites in that regard. He will still bring justice. He is a God of justice. If we are his, then as a good father, he will discipline. If we are not his, God has no grandchildren. He will punish. He is a holy and righteous God. 
I think some of those that Jesus brings to the forefront. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Luke 9, 23. And so, Joshua says, this isn't a lightweight decision, but they make the covenant. And we're challenged to follow through. Not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed as living sacrifices, which is our reasonable service. Because we've been bought at a price. We've been paid for with the blood of Jesus Christ. So, giving all diligence, add to our faith, growing in our faith. We've been saved, let's look like it. And so, you see how we've blended this together here. Joshua giving them this challenge. God gives us the same challenge, doesn't he? And so, I pray that we won't shy away from answering the call. Renewing our vow to continue to follow after him. And if you've never made that choice... Choose you this day to serve the Lord, to trust in Jesus. It will make all the difference. God bless. God keep you. Thank you for joining me.